Okay, I wanted to make a quick short video here to follow up on um, a video in my link um, where I made a Commodore 64 cable, keyboard cable, um, and 3D printed the, uh, the connector housings on both sides. Um, so the reason I wanted to bring uh, this video up to date is because um, in doing so, I learned a lot and I've made a new cable, um, which is much easier and much better, I think, than, than this cable that I made here. I printed the, this cable using the STL files I found on Thingiverse. And so the link is in the original video um, to that. So those files already had holes already um, in place for this type of thickness of cable. And uh, the front also had tabs, you know, that um, so you could push the front half of this enclosure into place and then that way you can release it. But many of the comments on there are that the tabs are too thin and they were, so they would keep snapping off. Um, and I really think that they were unessential anyways, because the, the wires on here are, are all, um, pretty much epoxied on. So even if something did happen to the cable, um, you would really have to kind of redo, you know, all of the wiring and everything. And it doesn't take long to just go ahead and just print out another enclosure. So anyways, long story short, um, while this cable did serve its purpose and it was functional, um, I ended up remixing this STL file and the remix is in the description of this video. First of all, I remixed it so the diameter of the hole fits a different cable. Um, it's smaller, it's thinner. Um, this cable here had 34 wires and you only need 25. So it's, it's thick and it's not as flexible as I would like. Certainly not as flexible as the original. This cable on the other hand has only 25 wires. It's thinner. It's very flexible. Um, really easy to work with. So, um, I remixed this. So I took out the tabs. Um, so I filled them in on the remix and I made the diameter of the hole smaller to fit this particular cable, of which I also linked in the description here. Much easier to work with. If you can s compare that to the original cable, which again is also really nice and flexible. Um, the cable that the STL files were made to use as far as the thickness, you can see the difference in that thickness. With this cable, it's still a little bit thicker but not as thick as the first. And like I said, very flexible, very pliable and gets the job done. Um, so wanted to make a quick video to bring you up to date with that. Um, and I'm going to take a few minutes um, in this video also to give you a few other little pointers that I've picked up um, along the way. Let me show you a couple of tips. Um, that uh, I'm, I want to give you based on my experience from the last time, because I'm obviously making a new cable um, that's a lot more efficient, a lot nicer than the one I made the last time. So first things first, I 3D printed the cases, but I revised the 3D print. I'll leave a link to the 3D print. Because this cable is um, a smaller diameter, I made the holes here a smaller diameter on each side. And I made them small enough to where it's really hard and tight to get this cable in. That way I don't need the shrink or the, the shrink, um, tubing, um, you know, around it to try to hold it in place. And I don't really even need to super glue it in place. This is so tight that I had to actually screw this on. So what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll add a little bit of super glue around it just to be safe. But, um, but I don't need heat shrink. That's what I was trying to say earlier. I don't need any heat shrink to hold it in place anymore like I did the last one. So this is really tight. So I'll leave the new um, files, um, a link to them. Um, the other thing I did is I took out the tabs um, 
so the sides are uh, are filled in now because I'm just going to super glue um, the 25 pin piece on it. Don't need the tabs. Um, yeah, one can say, well, the tabs in case you need to repair something. Yeah, yeah. but the, the thing is, I'm going to be epoxying this whole thing, you know, so the wires don't touch each other um, or anything like that. So yeah, the repair would have entailed you to take the whole thing off anyways. And yeah, make a new one, I suppose, without tearing up this. But quite honestly, um, just 3D print a whole new part. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that difficult. So anyways, so I decided to cover up these holes. All right. So a couple of tips. Um, you know, I went and flew through um, putting in the pins the last time. But there's a little bit of a methodology that I used um, that I need to clue you in on. So the first thing, obviously is you got to strip, you know, the wire, okay? This wire is thinner than the last wire. So this wire, um, I'm using the 30 gauge here to basically take enough of this off. Okay. And then for me to get the pin on, especially since this wire is so thin, what I want to do is I want to ensure that the bottom part of this, that piece there, uh, covers the jacket, the shielding of, of the wire. Because if you accidentally pull it, I don't want to pull the wire or bend the wire, you know, to weaken it. Um, I want to make sure that if, you know, as I'm putting all of this together and I'm tugging at these things, that I'm tugging at the shield, not the wire itself. So in order to do that easily and ensure that I'm getting that wire in there, let me get my glasses here, is I slide this in. And I make sure that the shielding comes right up inside the first set of tabs here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just kind of squeeze the tabs at the end together to make sure the wire is going to be held in place. Okay. Just like that. This way it doesn't slide out while I'm crimping it. So now that I got that in place, I'm going to take the crimp tool. You want to make sure that the opening is towards the top of the crimp tool here. The opening here goes to the top. Okay. And then I don't worry about the wire sliding around because I just crimp that little shielding in place at the bottom. Okay, so now you can see that the shield on the bottom is caught there and then the wire got crimped on the top side of this. So you can tug this a little bit and you can see, you know, it's in place really well. Okay, so I'm going to do all 24 wires. The 25th is the shield which I'm going to cut and I'm not going to use it. Okay. So I already did the other side, half of the other side. The other thing I wanted to show you in here is how I position these wires. So notice here that the wires are all towards the back. The, the bulk of this, you'll see that this has a little bit of room in the front here. So all the wires are positioned towards the wall. Okay. What that does, it allows me to take this. I push the pin in and then I use this Phillips 
to push it all the way in, all the way so the recess, you'll, you'll know when it's all the way in, it'll kind of click. But so the wire, I can ensure that the wire is, uh, that the pin is all the way down into the recess. It makes it very easy to do each one without anything getting in the way and it'll make the other side easier as well in pushing them and make sure that nothing is in the way. The other thing that this does is it makes sure that all the wires are pretty close to the wall opening up the middle so later on when I put epoxy in it'll have a nicer flow it'll be uniform and the epoxy I'm making because I'm putting in so it gets inside in between all the pins so that way if anything moves around as I'm putting this back together the pins aren't going to be touching each other. So when you put these in just make sure that you're putting the wire leaving the opening towards the middle and putting the wire towards the back wall there. And if this is, sounds confusing you'll know what I'm talking about as soon as you do it. So that's the other tip I I'll leave you with that I learned from the first time because putting that epoxy in the first time was a little bit of a mess because these wires weren't uniform. They were just all over the place. Okay, so let's put the rest of this together and then uh, we'll see how it goes and take it from there. Okay, so here's our final cable I'll put in place. Um, the uh, these are two pieces, two parts, as you saw. Um, basically, super glued the cap, the top piece on to each one of these. I didn't have to super glue the cable, the wire. It is really, really tight with the diameter that I use on the 3D print. If you don't like it this tight, um, you know, because it's kind of difficult to work with, because um, you got to pull it out a little bit to pull the wires in when you're putting the cap back on. Um, then you can always just, you know, file the hole just a little tiny bit bigger and then just super glue the sheath, you know, onto the 3D enclosure. But I like the way it turned out. It's really, really tight. You're not going to be able to pull this out very easily. Um, I didn't show you how I put all the pins in and all that stuff because I've done it in my previous video that's linked in here. Um, so I didn't want to bore you with that. But um, yeah, this thing turned out really good. Really happy with it. And uh, hope you enjoyed the update and uh, hope it motivates you to make your own cable. Like I said, if you don't have access to a 3D printer um, and the pins and, or you don't want to take the time to do this, um, stay tuned. In the near future, I'll be putting out a video on the ribbon cable um, method. Very easy, easy to find ribbon cable, easy to find the uh, um, DB25 plugs and... All you have to do is just grind a few tabs off. Anyways, hope you got something out of this. Like I always say, you only live once. Enjoy life. Live it like it's your last day. Peace out.